Now we're going to be exploring the properties of an exponential function. This is the general form for any exponential function. y equals a b to the x. Notice that x is now up here in the exponent position, hence why it's an exponential function. Now we have a few limitations on this function. a and b are not allowed to ever be 0, because if they were, we would just be left with y equals 0, which is a horizontal line and b is also always greater than zero. Now that's not to say that you might not never see a negative sign here, but remember if you do, a is negative, not b. So now we're gonna look at what the graph of an exponential function might look like. So here is y to the 2x. We're gonna go ahead and plug in in this table to see what our y coordinates are gonna be. So as you can see, as we plug in numbers for x, any number that is going to be negative is going to give me a very small value and as it becomes more positive the value gets a little bit bigger and that's because of our properties of exponents where if I have a negative number here it flips to the bottom of the fraction so the bigger the number on the bottom of the fraction the smaller the number now when we get bigger the number will increase because we're putting a whole number up here in the exponent now graphing this this is what you can see now let's say I plug in negative 10 so 2 to the negative 10 well that's gonna give me 0 0.00097656 so again very 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 small number now let's say I plug in negative 1000 okay this number will never ever reach 0 now it will continue to be a very very small number but it will never reach zero which means this function here is just going to get very close to the x-axis but it will not go past the x-axis down here alright so drawing my function it's gonna get very close but it will not pass the x-axis So now let's go ahead and graph this function where we have one-third to the x power. Plugging in values for x, you can see the smaller the value, so if we're negative, we're actually going to get a bigger whole number. And that's because of our properties of exponents again. The negative value goes to the bottom of the fraction and then hops right back up to the top. Now the bigger x gets, we're going to get a smaller and smaller fraction because that number goes to the bottom of the fraction and continues to make a very large denominator in our fraction. Now plugging in any big value for x, you can see that we're going to get very, 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 very small. Now again, we will never actually cross the x-axis. We will never become zero, but we're going to become a very small decimal, a very small fraction. So our function looks very similar to the last graph we looked at so we will approach the x-axis but now we're going to be approaching the positive x values we have two different types of exponential behavior we have exponential growth which occurs whenever b is bigger than one in this case it's called our growth factor and as x increases y also increases as they say exponentially now this can model population or sometimes bank accounts. Well, we hope our bank accounts, right? Now exponential decay occurs whenever b is between 0 and 1. And in this case, it's called our decay factor. So as x increases, y is actually decreasing, and it's going to approach 0. Now approach, meaning it won't actually reach 0, but it will approach 0. Now this can model the height of a ball bouncing or the value of a car as it depreciates. When looking at our exponential decay graphs, we saw that as x increased, we got very, very, very close to zero, but y actually never reached zero. In our exponential growth graphs, as x decreased, we got very, very, very close to zero, but y never actually reached zero. Now this line here, our x-axis, which also has the equation y equals zero, is called an asymptote. Now an asymptote represents a line in the graph that our graph will approach but never actually touch. We will never actually reach this value, but we will approach it and get very, very, very close. Now if you look at this graph, you can see that the y-intercept is always 0a. So this point right here is always 0a. That's going to be a very handy point for us to refer to later. 
Now domain, so domain means possible x values. Looking at these graphs, you can see I have arrows in both directions. X is going to increase this way and keep going, and then we're also going to go this way. It's going to keep going. So the domain is going to be all reals here. Now range is going to be a little bit different. Because remember we said that y approaches 0, but we'll never actually reach it or cross it. Which means for both of these parent functions, our range is y greater than 0. Let's take a look at some of these functions and let's decide if they are growth or decay. Now remember that's all dependent on only b. So when I'm looking at y equals a b to the x, I'm only focusing on B. A does not matter. So if B is bigger than 1, then it's going to be growth. If B is between 0 and 1, then it's decay. So looking at this function here, B is 0.95. So that means that this is going to be decay because that is smaller than 1. Now what is my y-intercept going to be? My y-intercept is always 0a, so this is going to be 0, 12, because a here is 12. Looking at the next graph over here, b is 2. So since b is 2, this is going to be growth. And our y-intercept is going to be 0a, so 0, comma, 0.25. Now here, b is 4. So since b equals 4, this will be growth, and our y-intercept is going to be 0, 3, which is a. Here, b is 3 fourths. 3 fourths is less than 1, so this is going to be decay, and our y-intercept will be 0, 11. One situation that exponential functions can model is money in a bank account. So here a of t will represent the amount of money in a bank account after time t has passed. a will represent the initial amount that is in the account. r here is going to be our rate of growth or rate of decay depending on if we're losing or gaining money. So this is going to be our percent here. And t is going to be time. Now t is often in years. So make sure that you know that if I say five years, t will be five. But if I say three months, well, three months is one-fourth of a year. So t is going to be a decimal instead of a whole number. It's also important to make sure that you know if our rate of growth or decay is going to be positive or negative. Because if it's decay, R here is going to be negative. And if it's growth, then it's going to be positive. So I invested $1,000 in a savings account at the end of 6th grade. The account pays 5% annual interest. How much money will be in the account after 6 years? So my initial amount, so my little a, is $1,000. Now the time period that has passed is 6 years. My percent is 5%, so that's 0 .05. So I have everything I need, I just go ahead and plug in. So A of 6, so remember I'm looking at after 6 years have passed, is equal to 1,000, 1 plus our rate, and then 6 years. So now, order of operations, I'm going to deal with what's in the parentheses first. Now I'm going to apply the exponent first. So 1.05 to the 6th power gives me a very long decimal. Now you should not be rounding here, so you should go ahead and leave this decimal in your calculator and then multiply by 1,000. So I'm going to get 1,340 and we're going to go ahead and round to the nearest cent and I get 0 .095 so I'm going to go ahead and say I get that extra penny and I'm going to say that's 10 cents. So this is going to be the amount that will be in my account after 6 years. Now if I were to ask you what was the interest, well this is the amount in the account after 6 years so you would take this 
and subtract the initial amount that I had in there. So you can see that's going to be $340.10. Alright, so go ahead and give these a try and put your answers in your notes.